I want to build something really big. I want to build an Ike Dike, something that's so big that it would prevent hurricane storm surge from devastating Houston and Galveston. Let me lay the land a little bit here. This is Galveston Island, for those that haven't been down there. Many have the Bolivar Peninsula. Bolivar Roads is how we get up the Houston Ship Channel, a small San, the San Luis Pass. We have about two million people at risk. Port of Houston is the second busiest port in the United States. Uh, there's a lot at risk here, and it got hit hard by Ike, but it could have been hit a, hard, a lot harder. I stayed right here during Ike. This is a historic building I own on the Strand. This is an iron front. You can imagine what Ike did it. This was the water line. Actually, the waves were getting up to the second floor. The, uh, and fat guy waiting in, that's me. Uh, uh, the the uh, surge came up very fast. It was up, it was, uh, this is the morning before Ike came in that night. And so the surge was already up. I was waiting into, and I'll explain why I didn't evacuate in a minute. Uh, this was the view out of the window that's already up the benches I'm in my historic building, um, opening a bottle of wine. And then uh, the next, it got over the benches, next, next bottle. And then, uh, <laughs> then the next day, and it got about five feet higher when the storm hit in the middle of the night when it was dark. And then the, the next day, you see this guy waiting out, uh, one of my neighbors. And there's some things in here. We, we think about... Uh, you know, the devastation of a hurricane, we hear these $30 billion numbers, but there's things that you don't think about. We lost 40,000 monarch oaks on Galveston Island. My grandchildren won't have the canopy. I mean, those are gone. The iron front buildings, the 10, some of the 10 most endangered historical treasures in the United States by the National Trust have been devastated by the, by the, by the salt water. I have one, and I'm trying to restore it. It's virtually impossible. These are really tough types of situations. The $30 billion doesn't really talk about what's really happening to people. Uh, these are some of my neighbors from some housing projects just down the road that evacuated the day before Ike. And what you see here, they went to... Uh, Dallas. Some others went to Austin. Thank you, Austin, for taking some of my fellow citizens and taking such good care of them during this time. These people still haven't come back. They left their, their homes. Their homes were bulldozed. They, they don't exist. They don't have anything to come back to. Our population has gone from 57,000 to 45,000. It's tough down there. These hurricanes really hurt people, and they hurt the elderly, and the disadvantage more than anyone else. Uh, while I was looking out the window, trying to decide the next bottle of wine, this is what the West End looked like uh, as, the, as the surge was, was coming in. And then the next morning, this is what we saw at Bolivar. These were, this was all houses before. And you can see it's just swept clean. There's not even debris. What happened is people tried to evacuate down the road they got to about here, water was already over. Remember how high it was when I was wading in. Uh, they came back, got in their homes, and they died. They died. The environment got hit hard too. This is an oil slick from a place near there. You see a whole lot of the oil slicks and that sort of stuff, and tanker, the plants, uh, the tanks, that all got 12 feet of surge. That all went, went underwater. What you don't see are things like the oyster beds. Half of those were covered with mud from Ike. The other half of the mud got in my building, I think. Uh, but, uh, and then, let's talk about a little bit about what we need to protect with this big thing that I want to build, this dike. This is uh, one of the plants in Houston, one of the refineries. We have about 500 refineries in this area. We do half the chemical feedstock for the United States, much of the jet fuel much of the gasoline. If a really serious hurricane hits there, you don't fly the next few days. I mean, everything just starts to, to shut down for four months. It's a national asset. We also have to think about the ecosystem. 
uh, Galveston Bay provides all kinds of juvenile habitat for all kinds of fish. And it, we, whatever we do, we have to protect that. We have to protect all those ecosystem services. They were badly damaged by Ike. The, uh, let's talk about the threat a little bit. This is some work that my, my group does in, in particular. We looked at all the hurricanes before Ike, 1851 to 2005, and the ones with dots on them are major hurricanes. And a major hurricane hits the Houston Gallison area every 15 years. We have a terrorist attack by nature every 15 years. Major hurricane, three or above. It's a minor hurricane. These are the ones that really cause a lot of devastation. Uh, also, when we were when we, uh, <clears throat> when we look at these, we see that, uh, that there's a little concentration just to the west of, G of Galveston, which is the worst possible place that we could hit them. The, uh, um, the, when, some of the why I didn't e evacuate while we were chasing Ike, we had a Tuesday, it was coming in down around Corpus. We were feeling pretty good up in Galveston. Not for the people in Corpus, but at least they wouldn't, maybe we wouldn't get hit. You always hope they turn around, but they never do. And then it went south. I made the brilliant decision not to board up my house at this point. And then Thursday, it started creeping up. Thursday p.m., still didn't look too bad. Friday a.m., we woke up. Ike was about to hit. Had it taken this path, it would have been much worse. But the reason I didn't evacuate is this. This is the Rita evacuation. We lost 30 people from our, the Gallatin area in the Rita evacuation. So we can't evacuate th through Houston. We have to do some kind of a barrier that protects us. Evacuation doesn't work. The, and Ike isn't the worst case. This is kind of a worst case scenario. This is a category four traveling at eight knots. And it uh, is positioned just to go right up the pike to have a maximum surge in the Houston area. This is the amount of feet of surge that you would see in Houston from this storm. This is Carla about just moved. So this storm exists. I mean, this isn't a hypothetical storm. It just hasn't hit here yet. Every 15 years, it's just a matter of when, not if. And if you look at the, this is the Netherlands. They had a storm like, like this. It's a North Sea storm. They made the decision then, never again. They weren't going to allow it to be hit again. And they built this, this series of, of uh, coastal barriers. And I'm going to steal from these coastal barriers some ideas on the different uh, gates that they have in particular. And I'm going to build an Ike Dike with you now. So the overall strategy is to keep the ocean surge out of Galveston Bay. We're going to catch it down here where it was about 15 feet instead of up here where it's 25 feet. We're going to catch it here with a coastal spine. The uh, first component of the Ike Dike already exists. It's the Galveston uh, the uh, seawall. It's a 17-foot high barrier built after the 1900 storm. Uh, it's done its job in preventing catastrophic Gulf overflows. This is the Ike waves actually going over it, the uh, memorial to the 1900 storm victims. But it cannot prevent the bay from coming back in. The bay came back in and got 75% of the houses on Galveston Island. Seawall did its job, but we need total protection there. Uh, second component are land extensions afforded by the seawall, but it doesn't have to be an actual seawall. You need the same kind of protection. It could be a revetment, which is kind of a pointy seawall. You don't have to have the cute, cuddly couple. You can just have a sand. And they can, they can look natural. This, uh, this is one from, uh, from Holland. I actually went over and, uh, and uh, photographed. And they can look just like a natural barrier, but they have rocks inside so they, that they would hold the uh, surge. We wouldn't have had the devastation. We wouldn't have had the $30 billion. Uh, or we could raise the roads, put 12 feet. The coastal highways are about five feet now. Going, going down the islands, we could just raise them up to, up to 17 feet by, by going 12 feet higher. And so we could get that protection if we're worried about environmental in, impacts on the coast. The third component is the most fun part. Those are the sea barriers. And uh, this is where the Dutch really have schooled us over the last uh, 20 years about how to protect their country 
and we could use these for ours. The navigation solution, uh, because Bolivar Roads has navigation problems and circulation problems for most of the circulation in Galveston Bay, we've got to be sure we can do navigation and circulation. The navigation solution are these big swinging gates. These are, these are actually the size of the Eiffel Tower is tall. These are the only movable objects you can see from space. These things are huge, but they work. They've been tested. They work, and they allow navigation through them. This is a picture. There I am. You can trust me. Uh, <laughs> these things are big, as you can see. And, uh, and they, uh, like I say, they, they work. They're built. They test them once a year. I flew over to, to look at the test to be sure. And so this takes care of the navigation. This would take care of any kind of navigation up the Houston Ship Channel. Now, the Bay Circulation Solution is we can also find there, each of these is a little floodgate. So you can lower them or you can raise them. And when you're raised, you have the full circulation between the open ocean out here and the bay. And so what we could do, and the, the, this is them under, under some uh, under surge, they work. These have all been tested. This is proven technology. I'm not coming up with any great big idea that's different. I just stole from the Dutch. But it works there, and it can work here. In fact, one thing I thought we were doing, we were going to put them together in this design. Turned out the Dutch had already done a design for New York City that had, the, had them put together. So you have the big swinging gates for navigation. You have the lift gates here for smaller boats. We wouldn't necessarily need that. There's a lot more traffic here. And then all your circulation, so the tidal flows can do it. We could do this for uh, Bolivar Roads. Now, all together, these things form a coastal spine. It keeps the, the surge out of Galveston Bay. It also allows us a very good environmental thing in that now we don't have to harden Galveston Bay. The cost of doing nothing is always higher than we think. After Ike, uh, many of the landowners and the companies around Galveston Bay are thinking about hardening it. Making it, making bulkheads, making it strong. If you have the coastal spine, you can leave it soft. It can, be, it, it, just, it can remain wetlands. And so the coastal spine, the way the Dutch have done it, has worked very well in their country. Now, the <laughs> University of Texas was kind enough to me to uh, do some surge simulations without my knowledge or input, actually. Uh, <laughs> but they were kind. I, I appreciate it. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, this, these were with, uh, with and without the Ike Dyke. This is without the Ike Dyke. And if you remember we, the general geography, this is what's left of Galveston Island, just about three white spots. Everything else is underwater. Bolivar was, was here. It's gone. And that's why all those people and the debris was swept. The, it was all found up in here. It was just was totally was swept clean. And uh, so what we see are those huge surges. Now this is with the Ike Dyke. Now, the University of Texas, bless their hearts, modeled it as a static dike, which, which is fine. They, they run a beautiful ADSERC model here. They're really some of the best modelers in the, in, in, in the world. Uh, but this was a static dike, and so it, but it would be an active dike, so we would open and close. We would close it at, at low tide. This shows no damage, but the, tide, the water would have actually been about three feet lower. So we wouldn't have had any problem with Ike. The Ike Dyke works for Ike, and if you look at the differences between the two, is the next slide. Indeed, it does just what we said. It catches the water here. This is higher. It's much lower all in here. So modeling indicates that this would work. The uh, next steps are that we're, we've formed a, at, the, uh, at the asking of the governor's uh, commission on renewal and recovery of the coast, we formed a six county public corporation. These six counties are in it. So the Ike Dyke has a home now. Regional surge suppression has a home for the first time. We're trying to work together to do the, the uh, studies needed to determine what the engineering and the environmental solutions should be for, for the dike. And if we build this thing, if we build an Ike Dyke, we'll never have the kind of destruction to property well, no, we won't have it to ecosystems, and most of all, we'll save many of our, of our citizens' lives. Thank you.